Roman Fourth English Sermon Manuscript. Today we will make an observation of Roman chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty-three. Let's read verses eighteen of today's text. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Literally, Paul said that wrath of God revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppressed truth in unrighteousness, which means those people could not eliminate or get rid of the truth itself, but suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They knew the truth in their fashion. They could reshape the truth in the wrong way while it is delivered. In order to do that, those people should know the truth itself, but they loved worldly prosperity in their life more than the truth itself. They may think the truth would hinder the achievements of their worldly prosperity. Therefore, those people try to disturb the delivery of the truth to the member of Christian church. Therefore, they deliver lots of worldly example instead of Bible itself at a time of preaching. Paul wants this type of congregation in Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside myths. Paul said that wrath of God was revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people. The ungodliness could happen in a vertical relationship with God, and the unrighteousness could happen in a horizontal relationship among human neighbors. Most of the religious people think less importance of human relationship than worshiping his gods. Now, about this relationship, Jesus answered the question to Pharisees as in Matthew chapter 22, verse 35 to 40. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is a great and foremost commandment. The second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Often these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets. Who does suppress the truth outwardly and congregationally? They might be worshippers of the God with some knowledge of Jesus Christ, especially crucifixion on the cross to death and his relationship with the God. Maybe great religious conceptual son of God. Paul illustrate such people as described in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their reasoning, and their senseless heart were darkened. And Paul described in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a depraved mind 
to do those things that are not proper. Paul illustrates such a people who knew God but did not acknowledge Him, the people who could pervert the truth or cover the truth to be shined in a different color, would be talented person in such a subject. Usually such a people should learn the Bible professionally. We call them pastors, priests, Sunday school teachers, and teaching elders who could preach openly at a church or teach in the Bible class. Let's read the verse 19 to 20 of today's text. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Greek words which was translated in English eternal is ideos. The ideos could be translated in English always instead of eternal. Therefore, his power and divine nature could be seen always, which is not so difficult to be found with a specific attention or gift. Paul emphasized that his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made in this world. But I'm going to add the following. His eternal power and divine nature have been perceived by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has existed always before the creation. Now, let's read the verses 21 to 23 of today's text. For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their reasoning, and their senseless heart were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the uh, incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible mankind of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Paul said that they knew God, but they did not honor Him or give thanks. Who were they? They were the Jews. They knew God, in some sense better than Gentile Christian. Their understanding about a God came from their father's teaching based on their father's experiences and traditions. It was a long time since their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were chosen by the God. But why did Paul say that the Jews did not honor him as God. When the Jews thought that Jesus was calling the God his own father, making himself equal with God, Jesus answered the Jews in John chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. For not even the father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son so that all we honor the Son just as they honor the Father. The one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. The Jews crucified the Son, He would not honor Him. To death, corruptible means mortal, hence God is incorruptible, but mankind, animals, birds, and all crawling creatures are mortal, because they are corruptible. If anyone honor this corruptible creature more than the Creator, God, he would be an idol worshiper. The Jews did not worship the idols, but they became fertile in their reasoning, 
and their senseless heart were darkened. The glory doxa of God could be found in His Son, Jesus Christ, as declared in John chapter 12, verse 23 to 26. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of a wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The one who loves his life loses it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. His crucifixion glorified him and his Father. After finishing the persecution from the Roman Empire by the Edict of Milan, A.D. 313, the Christian churches have wielded worldly power to control the secular kingdoms in Europe through Roman Empire, Frankish kingdoms, Avar kingdoms, Byzantine Empire, Kingdom of Visigoths, British Isles, and Egypt, so on. On the way of expansion of Christianity, the God has not been glorified, but Christian kingdoms and churches have been glorified instead. More than 1,500 years, European kingdoms have used the Christian missionary to conquer the Asian and American underdeveloped countries in order to plunder their natural resources. They have never glorified the God but used him for their industrial development and prosperity. Worldly power and prosperity could never glorify the God. The Christians do not of the word, as Jesus declared in John chapter 15, verse 18 to 19. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. The construction of a large and gorgeous and magnificent with modern facilities and with sophisticated construction difficulties the church members express their satisfaction as a glorification of the God. But the God has never been glorified by such a building project. The Christian church leaders and secular authorities have enjoyed their satisfaction as glorification of God, but he has never been glorified by this type of works. We should give consideration to what Jesus illustrated in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. Just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed, O my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. 
naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you, of thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly, I say to you, to the extent you did it for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Now, this is the right way to glorify the God in the name of Jesus Christ, while we are alive and live in this world as a Christian church member. Let's take a consideration what the Christian churches and kingdom have done so far. They have not followed their Lord Jesus Christ, but they have followed whatever they prefer, just as what Adam chose in the Garden of Eden instead of what the God would provide. The glory of God should be found in Jesus Christ who was crucified and died on the cross. But to this church tries not through the cross, but the human organization of value which has been formed in the worldly church. The worldly value has been represented by its wealth, power, and social influences. When a church grows in number of members and in wealth and in its buildings and facilities, they say the church is glorifying the God. But it is not. They don't care how the church has been enlarged and become rich. In John chapter 12, verse 40 to 43, Jesus mentioned about the glory of man as follows in NRSV translation. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him, but because of Pharisees, they did not confess it for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human glory more than the glory that comes from God. It is not difficult to find those type of people from today's Christian churches. I think they may be most of congregation members, especially among the leaders group. Therefore, the following are the title of the sermon. Religious disease without knowing divine truths.